Hello, everyone. GM, GM. Welcome to the Salon of Change Log. I'm Nick from the Salon of Foundation DevRel team. And today I've got Mike with me. How are you doing, Mike? Not too bad. And yourself? I'm doing great. I'm excited to dive into a change log. I've got, you know, my my new setup, I suppose. It's a work in progress. But let's go ahead and dive into it. What uh, what resource do you have for us this week? Excellent. Uh, I wanted to talk very briefly about the professional education repo. Uh, this is something that we're really starting to push out to existing organizations. Basically, anyone who wants to be able to train other people on Solana, we have not just the content, but the uh, instructor notes, the example code, the guides to run events, anything that any external organization could need to train people on Solana and just hit the ground running and go. Um, So I'll throw a link to that in the show notes. Uh, We have offerings for one hour, one day, and a full four-day training course that can in turn also be uh, split out into... um, like a 12-week course as well. Um, yeah, a huge list of uh, resources that are all in that Git repo. Um, so yeah, uh, very exciting times for anyone who's interested in training other people on Solana. Uh, you can also follow uh, Solana underscore devs on X or Mike McKenna, and uh, we can keep you up to date with that training program as well. Yeah, the professional education program is really great. Um, we just toasted one in the New York City office, and we'll be doing more, maybe one even at Breakpoint. Um, yeah, it's, uh, one of the thing, other things I wanted to talk about also related to education um, was that people in the community might have noticed that we've moved all the content um, that used to be on Soldev onto Solana.com. Um, and so anything that you saw that was on Soldev redirects all the way to Solana.com now, and it's all still there. A couple of the older courses we've noticed were a little bit out of date. They were made a couple of years ago. Um, you know, Anchor updates, Solana updates, a lot of things change in crypto um, in a small amount of time. So we have a, a really great group of people from Super Team um, who are going through and basically taking all the example code in those uh, courses, making sure that it works on the current version of everything, not just our tools, but also like the current version of React. We're using like create Solana DAP to make all these front ends. Oh yeah, updating everything throughout. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's real comprehensive. Um, so I wanted to give a shout out to a particularly uh, like Cipher Coda, Manuel, Sam, Wur, Wur, and uh, and Jimmy, um, who have been this like core group of uh, um, super team contributors who have taken up a huge amount uh, of this work in exchange for some uh, juicy grants from Solana Foundation um, to get all this uh, this content updated. Yeah, updated content, always good throughout. Speaking of Jimmy, I think Jimmy was actually top on the Stack Exchange leaderboard this week, wasn't he? Yeah, uh, he is uh, He's kicking goals all over the place this week. Yeah, he's, he's number one ranked for this week on Stack Exchange, like I mentioned. Shout out to everyone else on Stack Exchange, doing amazing work over there, helping support the community from really grassroots um, going up, which is really awesome. We've got Jimmy, number one this week. We've got Nara Vane. I think I'm pronouncing that right. We've got Mohammed Saeed and FE2. John C. Fan up there. Uh, yeah, good work to everyone on Stack Exchange this week. All right, and then moving on, something we've mentioned a couple of times in the last several weeks and we'll continue to mention is uh, Solana RPC version 2, specifically Agave RPC version 2, with the new version of the uh, Agave version 2 actually being released, the timeline is uh, being published by the Anza team. All the deprecated RPC methods and things are going to be removed. You need to make sure you're going through and updating your code if you're using anything that's marked deprecated. Yeah, so a lot of these have been marked deprecated for a while, but now it's mm-hmm. actually happening. So if you've got code that uses, you know, uh, get confirmed blocks, that's now get blocks, everything's actually looking through the updates. A lot of them actually make uh, more sense. It's a little bit more like sensible naming. Confirm transaction is now like get signature status, which makes sense because it has its own like finality that you can figure for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it, they're, they're all positive changes, but there's a lot of code out there that is using these uh, V1 API calls. Um, and you know, you'll see in your editors, they'll, they're all crossed out and they're, they're marked as deprecated, but um, yeah, now is the time to go through and replace all those those uh, calls. Um, it's, it's a pretty easy change. You just need to do it. Um, some of the RPC providers are also sending out warnings to uh, 
a few of oh, the yeah. customers that they can see are using a lot of these uh, deprecated calls. Yeah, hundred percent. Also, some of the uh, crate names and package names; um, those are also being updated from like Solana Dash Validator to Agave Dash Validator, things like that. And then moving on for uh, CIMD for this week, we've got this really great one from Tau, and it's it's going to have a, a really big impact on the ecosystem, kind of related to all the deprecated stuff. Is this CIMD one seven two from Tau is to reduce the default compute unit per instruction? If you don't already know, right now you have the compute budget instructions. You can optionally put those within a transaction. And if you do not define a uh, specific custom compute budget within your specific transaction, it defaults to 200,000 compute units per instruction for every single instruction you have, and that all adds up. So right now there's a lot of wasted compute and uh, basically empty blocks, like uh, not empty blocks, but there's wasted compute and less full blocks, so they're less optimized. And this proposal is basically a tiered system to remove that default completely. Initially, it's going to uh, the proposal is to have this scheduled ramp down, so it's going to basically adjust that 200,000 CUs to 20,000 CUs, which still will make it so most transactions will still go through. Bigger transactions, things like you know, if you're doing lots of swaps on things like Jupiter or more complicated things, um, you need to make sure you're updating that code. And then after some time period of this ramp down, then it's going to be finally removed completely, setting it to zero. And that way, once this is fully live, every single developer will need to manually put in a compute budget instruction to set the specific compute unit usage within their transaction. So this is a very, very important thing to keep track of. We'll make sure we keep mentioning it here and on the Solana Devs Twitter account. Yeah, and they've done it in a really like responsible way as well. I think reducing it from an insanely high number to a, a reasonable number that handles most simple transactions. And then if you want something, uh, if you want a little bit a more complex transaction, you need to set a compute unit budget now. That's a very like nice way of rolling in a significant change like this. Yeah, agreed. But it will lead to more densely packed blocks, which is great. You can think of... Um, if you think of Solana as a uh, you know mainnet and devnet and testnet as like big global computers, every byte counts. It's a you know resource constrained system, and uh, the result of more densely packed blocks is that uh, people running validators get more revenue, which is great. Yeah, yeah, it's always good for the, the validator community. If you have any thoughts on this particular SIMD or any SIMD, feel free to jump on the GitHub. You can go to Solana.com/SIMD. And it'll take you right to the correct GitHub repo and uh, have the conversation. We've already got Caveman Loverboy on here posting some uh, sort of points that he would like to bring up. And so if you want to join the conversation on any of these SIMDs, be sure to join in on GitHub. But that's going to wrap it up for this episode of The Changelog. And we'll catch you at Breakpoint. See you there.